Thanks for watching. I'm Grant Coltrup, and in this series, we will explore significant art movements through Western history and investigate why they carried such importance. First of all, what is an art movement? Most generally, it's a tendency of a group of artists toward a certain style, philosophy, or goal. Some movements span decades and others across centuries. We will start with the birth of human creative media and quickly move through the ancient world to reach the Renaissance. The waves from the Renaissance were felt through to the 19th century, when new technology and deviations led to more media and more movements. As we reach the 20th century, the centuries-long movements from earlier times are non-existent. One, one trend we will see many times is the connection between a society's wealth and its advances in the arts. As wealth accumulates in a society, there are more free resources with which to be creative. Creativity requires excess. Finally, we will follow the ebb and flow of realism. Realism is the artistic path which attempts to represent things as they are seen. The opposing path is abstraction, which does not attempt to represent reality. As factors like wealth, religion, and hegemony shift through a culture's timeline, so too does that culture's obsession shift from art, which represents the real, to art, which represents the abstract. The prehistoric movement tells a story about early humanity, although we don't know very many of the storytellers. Prehistoric art carried the purpose of uniting understanding, whether strategic for luck in the hunt, like these cave paintings, or legalistic to establish shared values, such as the stele of Hammurabi. Prehistoric art bears the purpose of human cooperation. The power and wealth of the ancient Greek and Roman states is obvious in the detail and perfection which we find throughout this movement. The dominant theme is realism, artists attempting to copy what they saw in reality, or the realistic depiction of deities. From an anthropological perspective, this movement marks a society with significant wealth, enough for such incredible pieces to emerge so early in human history. This glory was not to last. After the Roman Empire accepted Christianity as its dominant religion, the focus of the arts were redirected into biblical storytelling. The purpose of art became the glorification of Christ and the sharing of his story. At the same time the Byzantine movement was occurring in the Eastern Empire, the West experienced the medieval movement. Also heavily influenced by the Roman Empire's acceptance and encouragement of Christianity, the medieval movement was entirely religiously focused. This is the Western European version of the Byzantine movement, the two of which bridge the European Dark Ages from the fall of the Roman Empire to the Renaissance. Similarly, realism was abandoned and allegory prevailed. Few advances in the arts were made during this period, which was markedly ended by the beginning of the Renaissance. The Renaissance, following the Dark Ages, featured great creative and intellectual activity across all disciplines, though the evolution of art is incredibly representative of the period's change. Once again, European society had wealth in excess, and, with the help of new technologies like the printing press, literacy was on the rise. The Protestant Reformation would shake the foundations of the church and force an evolution which would ultimately embrace the arts. We will see the physical outcomes of a literal spread of ideas of the Renaissance across different states of Europe and the themes which will reverberate through the coming centuries. In Florence and Siena, Italy, were the first stirrings of the much larger, continent-shaking awakening by humanity. These artists of the early Renaissance movement were pioneers as they recovered and reapplied classical techniques of the Greeks and Romans. Their work is the first to deviate away from the medieval and Byzantine focus on religious storytelling and redirect efforts and motivations into style and technique. The Northern Renaissance movement would be a result of the early Renaissance influences spreading across the Alps and into France, the Low Countries, and Germany. 
This renaissance, however, would not idolize the ancient Greeks and Romans, but would rather incorporate their realist techniques into the religious projects of the medieval movement. Artists of this movement would impress their Italian critics with a new type of oil paint, rich and agile compared to the fast-drying Mediterranean fresco. Aside from perfecting their understanding and application of classical techniques, artists of the Renaissance sought to capture human experience and emotion. Religious artifacts would remain commonplace, but now the focus would shift from sharing a religious message to creating an outstanding piece of art. Style and technique were again just as important as the subject matter. New technologies like the use of oil paint contributed to new rich colors. Discoveries like the mathematical laws of perspective contributed to realist pieces, like the one on this slide. Just look at those angles. The popularity of self-portraits also reveals a deeper shift during this time, a shift into the understanding of the self. The High Renaissance movement refers to the investment by the church in artists. Flush with cash, adoring fans, and eager assistants, the professionals like da Vinci, Michelangelo, and Raphael perfected their use of both realism and illusionism on massive architectural commissions. These artists were externalizing images of antiquity for the church. Thus, the High Renaissance movement could also be considered as one of the greatest marketing campaigns performed by the church. Venice, for centuries the most powerful city in Italy. Such wealth and history caused another notable Renaissance movement, which distinguished itself in a few ways. First, the focus was not religious. Instead, the artists of the Venetian Renaissance looked to nature and the world outside for inspiration. Notably, they also began the now widespread use of canvas, rather than wood, as a painter's medium. A movement of the late Renaissance, artists of mannerism, or maniera, represented the peak of manner and style. Their pieces featured dramatic effect and elements of virtuosity. The perfectionist style and high class association caused a cultural movement, a fad, which became obsessed with the possession of the art rather than the subject on the canvas. This obsession was so great that a reaction was drawn from the religious council of Trent against the excess exhibited by artists and their fans. Thus, the Renaissance rebirthed the artistic advances made by the ancients and fixed the attention of the church. The Dutch Golden Age was a movement fueled by the colonial wealth of the Low Countries. Painters pursued the realist motivations of the Renaissance with a variety of subjects with a keen interest in the perils of pleasure-seeking, known as vanitas. The church's decline was evident as themes like still life, portraiture, and landscape realism were pursued. Another investment by the church, similar to the High Renaissance, collided with the Maniera and produced the Baroque period of religious, emotional, and passionate art. Accompanied by dramatic, often theatrical presentation, these climactic scenes thrilled crowds with new techniques of chiaroscuro, the study of light and dark. The Rococo movement was a direct reaction against the extravagance of the Baroque. A truly Western European movement, the Rococo also encompassed interior and architectural design and dominated professional architecture. Themes like love and lighthearted entertainment are common features, as are soft colors and smooth curves. The neoclassical movement is symbolized by another obsession with the classics, similar to the surge which ignited the Renaissance just a few centuries earlier. Artists perfected their art by practicing restraint with smooth contours and indiscernible brushstrokes. This movement was spread by young aristocrats as they undertook the grand tour to finish their education by visiting Paris, Venice, Florence, and Rome. Often described as the antithesis of neoclassicism, Romanticism abandoned all ideas of restraint and perfection instead placing emphasis representing the passion of the individual. Countering the idolization of reason, 
during the Enlightenment, the movement was represented by artists across visual arts, music, and literature who glorified emotion, patriotism, and the human spirit over learning, reason, and intellect. Lashing out against the excess and self-indulgence of the Romantics, artists of the Realism movement were more focused on portrayal of the world as it is, rather than exaggeration and extravagance. With the use of new technology like the film camera, pieces during this movement captured moments of normal life, and painters created images with no illusion or artificiality. These moments portrayed would be similar to the still life trend explored by the Dutch Golden Age artists. The Impressionist movement would mix both romantic concepts of extravagant paints and colors with a realist tendency to seek moments or impressions. A group independent of the art academies, the Impressionists applied modern scientific discoveries in color and light to stun their audiences. This group also adopted the a la prima, at the first, technique of painting outside their studio and directly in the presence of their motifs. The post-Impressionist movement is marked by a group of artists who implemented those techniques of light and shadow pioneered by the Impressionists, but preferred the realist tendency to represent the mundane. Even moments captured photographically tended to still be normal life. Interestingly, this group did not call themselves post-Impressionists. The term was not realized until after all of their deaths. Neo-Impressionism is a later period movement marked by more experimentation with colors and the manipulation of light. Similar to the Impressionists, the capture of intriguing or exciting moments would return to the forefront. George Seurat, their leader, based his technique on exploiting the color theories of Michel Chauvrel, who determined that colors do not change, but their visual sensations do. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and visit my channel for more exciting content.